Hey, thanks for watching today. This video is going to cover tax investing news across 14 states using ParcelFair. And we've been covering these types of updates uh, every other week, so about every two weeks now we're putting these videos out. And so this is our first one in September, so we'll have some catching up to do about what's going on in September. And we're going to cover a lot of things that uh, our other videos maybe go deeper into, but this one just supposed to give you a high level. And uh, since we're covering all these different states, if you want to skip a state or jump straight to one that you're interested in, just use the chapters on YouTube at the bottom of the video. It'll let you skip uh, straight over to whatever you want to see. So on that note, let's get started. Uh, we had some feedback that people wanted to see some totals on the market, so we added that this week. So what we're looking at are the new properties added to Parcel Fair in the last two weeks, since our, since our last video really. And so uh, in total, 14,232 properties have been added. And this means we've added these properties for you to uh, search and report on and uh, purchase, uh, whether they're at auction or over the counter. If you break that number down, there's 10,815 of those were tax liens, 2,477 were tax deeds, 919 of those properties are foreclosures, and 21 of those were land bank properties or similar type of purchasing programs. And let's break it down by state also. The new properties added by state uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, this is gonna be OTCs first. These are over-the-counter properties that you can uh, buy out of season from these states or counties. You'll see Florida at the top of the list with 586. That's a combination of both tax deeds and tax liens. They have both. Uh, one of the reasons you see this number going up is because we're adding a new tax deed lists that, as we find them in Florida for over-the-counter tax deeds. Uh, so that's one of the reasons this number is up, up top. Mississippi is next. We've had 544 tax deeds added from the Tax Forfeited Lands Department of Mississippi. Arkansas had 231 tax deeds added, followed by Colorado had 63 tax liens over the counter added. And that's uh, one thing we wanted to really be careful about here. There were 63 tax lien properties added, but there were over 900 tax liens on those 63 properties. So that was kind of a weird one to look at. It's this uh, it's just strange how a property can have so many liens on it that there were 20 something liens on some of these properties. They go way back. Uh, so Tennessee had 17 uh, OTC ads. Those would have been in Memphis from the Shelby Land Bank. Maryland had eight over the counter ads. Those would have been tax liens. And Alabama had six tax deeds, tax certificates that were added over the counter. And Arizona had three tax liens added. So 1,458 over-the-counter opportunities that have shown up in the last two weeks. Moving on to auctions, you'll see Indiana had a, a, a huge load of new properties show up for tax auction, the 7,116. That's because the rest of the counties in Indiana have released their October tax sales. So there's like 80 counties. We're going to cover that later. But uh, a lot of tax auctions coming up for this fall season and, and a lot of properties there. In second, you see New Jersey, 2,870 tax liens were added at auction. That's across, I believe, 26 auctions that were released in the last few weeks. New Jersey's shaping up to have a pretty large fall season, and uh, we're going to keep tracking that as we go. Uh, Florida had 741. These would be tax deeds that were added. Tax deed auctions are, are available this time of year for Florida. So 741 new tax deeds at auction. Tennessee had 639 new tax deeds that you can buy at auction. And New Mexico had 319. That's a video we covered this week. There were eight auctions that have been announced for their fall season so far. And lastly, Mississippi added 170. This was kind of strange. These tax liens showed up right before the auction happened, which was strange because usually they uh, they put these out two weeks in advance. But there were you know with 140,000 tax lien properties being auctioned, I guess 170 showing up last minute is kind of like a rounding error to them. So 170 for Mississippi showed up right before the auction. And so that's a total of 11,855 uh, properties from tax auctions. These are that were uh, added to Parcel Fair in the last two weeks for you to research. And lastly, we do track foreclosures in a few states and we're growing there. Uh, these three states in particular, Florida added 476 foreclosures. 
Colorado added 360 foreclosures, and Indiana 83. These are uh, foreclosure auctions, by the way. And so that's 919 total foreclosure properties that we've added. So now that we've gone over the market totals, let's jump into our first state this week. It's going to be New Mexico. They have this fall tax deed season that's showing up uh, one, one auction at a time. We, it's, it felt like there was an auction being added every day for a while there. And so we're up to eight auctions currently available. I, I want you to remember these are in-person auctions. They are not online. The advantage is that, in theory, you'd have smaller competition of people, only the people that were willing to travel to New Mexico, whereas on an online auction, you have anyone who is at a computer willing to bid. So uh, that should be considered. Uh, if you can travel to New Mexico, there could be an advantage for you. Uh, here's a list of those auctions uh, really quick. And it's worth noting we did make a video a few days ago, that's actually last week, that uh, gave a deep dive into New Mexico auctions. So, uh, I won't take a lot of time to demonstrate for you today, but let's take a look at these auctions. Uh, this is the Taxation and Revenue Department for New Mexico. This is the state that tracks these auctions. And uh, this is the website where you would find the schedule, the locations, the times. And if you click on any one of these, uh, you can actually see all the information you need about where the uh, auction is going to be, when, and what the properties are. That's at the bottom of the document and each one of these blocks of text represent a property. So uh, let's view it on parcel fare quickly. Again, we have another video. If, you, if you're interested in New Mexico, I highly recommend, we'll put a link in this video for it too, for you to uh, get a deeper dive in New Mexico. Uh, I see some properties here, let's just uh, zoom in. And um, you can see uh, just in this city block here, we'll go to satellite, actually that's not a city, <laughs> that's in the middle of the desert. It looks like there was uh, maybe some development that was intended for this area that, that didn't work out. So uh, while we're here, we'll click on one of these and we'll see the full property. This is five and a half acres uh, available and it looks like the amount due is $1,200, which will be the starting bid of the auction. So that's just how you would quickly look at these properties. These are smaller auctions and so one thing you might want to do is uh, view them in a grid instead of on the map. And then you can sort by the total valuation and uh, get a much better look at the higher value properties. And we'll just uh, pick one of these. This, this says Blue Lake Apartments. Um, unfortunately, there's no street view here. The Google car did not travel this part of New Mexico. But you can see, uh, here's all the information you would want to read about the property. You can click on the uh, links in the bottom right to go see the tax assessor website and view details about the property. And lastly, this uh, auction uh, purchase option shows you the time, location, date, and uh, taxes due with links to the auction website as well so you can find your way to the auction. So that's everything you need to be able to, to do that. Uh, this is the auction calendar in Parcel Fair for New Mexico. You see seven of those auctions are in September, one is in October. There could be more being added in the few, next few days, I don't know, so we'll keep an eye on that and we'll announce it on our Facebook group. And uh, so you can keep track of any auctions that are being added that way. But uh, here's the calendar for September for you. And that covers New Mexico. So let's take a look next at New Jersey. This uh, We've been talking about how we expect more auctions to show up and really the last couple of weeks they did. We've seen 26 auctions announced. Uh, 10 of those for September, 16 for October. There's probably more coming, so we'll check back for more auctions, and you should check back to see as they're added. And uh, we're, yeah, we're checking daily on that, so you should check too, uh, just to keep up with us and see what we're finding out. Uh, briefly here, let's see the New Jersey auction calendar. Uh, you see there, we've had auctions every month of the year, just um, a few here and there. June had 12. And now September has 10, October has 16, so we're hitting another sort of a high season, if you will. But these are the different areas that have auctions. Uh, these are tracked at municipality level. You'll notice some of these are very small, 51, 49 parcels. And then you have some in the hundreds. There's a uh, Newark will have 751 parcels advertised at least at this point. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce this one, but it's 410 parcels. So some of these auctions are a little bit bigger. And uh, you might have more to choose from if you're looking uh, to hit a market like that. Let's check out Lakewood. I noticed it, um, it actually has a lot of properties available. 
Uh, I don't know New Jersey geography that well, so uh, let's go turn on the uh, county borders here. All right, so um, again, this is track the municipality level, but we can see um, the county border around this area as well. It's a large county. The municipality must be this area here. It's kind of near the coast. There's some uh, rivers, bodies of water nearby. But uh, just taking a look quickly here, there's a lot. It looks like a lot of small units, uh, small lots available here, probably being built. So that's an interesting strategy if you're trying to find buildable lots that are. Uh, I mean, it looks like development's happening all around these lots. So you can hold those for interest, and when the builder's ready to develop, uh, you kind of play the bank on those. Uh, these are individual units that are developed. These are kind of nice. Uh, these are look, look kind of like uh, townhomes or condos. Uh, they're, pri they're valued pretty high too, $400,000 plus. And uh, let's just um, we'll take a look at one of them. Let's go over here. So uh, there's a street view from Google, and everything you need to know to bid at the auction would be on this, uh, oops, whoops, wrong link, on the purchase option here. So uh, you'll notice the auction is online with real auction and there's a link to register and a link to the actual list here and it's on October 12th. I will say some of our New Jersey users have pointed out to me that uh, you do have to register early for these auctions and uh, we don't always have the registration date. When we do we put it in this information but uh, I wouldn't research an auction right up to the day before and then expect to register. I would try to register a couple weeks early just to make sure you can get in there. And I don't know if that's just a policy of New Jersey or if it's uh, on demand that they fill up their auctions so fast. I, I don't know. I just uh, heard that piece of advice and wanted to share it with you. So uh, that's a good sample of uh, part of New Jersey. Again, there's 26 of these auctions coming up, so let's just... Uh, Let's look at all counties at once and, and uh, throw all the properties on screen so you can get an idea. We'll, um, so yeah, you can see uh, next to New York City up in the Newark area, uh, quite a few properties here. That's probably a, a popular area to be investing. And uh, let's see, let's go south a little bit. I noticed some, uh, here's a few more auctions around here. These look maybe more like suburban areas. Let's go back to satellite. Yeah, so these are more like neighborhoods here in this part of the state. Again, I'm not a New Jersey expert by any means, so um, I'm just showing you where the properties are. That's, uh, that's about as much as I can do for you. Um, but yeah, lots of neighborhoods and suburban looking areas too. So depending on your strategy, uh, you may want to target uh, un undeveloped lots or uh, small rental properties, whatever that may be. New Jersey seems to have a good variety going on. So let's switch over and talk about Indiana. So Indiana, if you remember the market totals a moment ago, there's a, a ton of properties that have uh, become available because the first fall sales are here and we're actually 80 of the counties now have released their fall lists. Uh, those sales will go through October uh, and they started at the end of August, the first two I think. So we're, we're barely opening this auction season up. So of the remaining auctions, uh, actually of all the auctions, these are the largest ones. So Lake County, it's not uncommon to have 10,000 plus parcels advertised. Marion County, St. Joseph and Madison, all uh, you know, the, just over 1,000. And then Allen County, 700. It's uh, not too far off. <clears throat> so that's the fall sales. And before I show you the fall sales, I want to mention uh, they have a steady flow of foreclosure auctions in Indiana as well that we track. So uh, you'll notice 31 completed in August, 31 are scheduled in September, and 30 are already scheduled for October, probably with more coming. So don't forget about Indiana foreclosures. But let's jump over and take a look at their uh, fall auction season first. So I'm going to switch my auction calendar over to Indiana. And right now you're looking at foreclosure auctions and tax auctions. Let's look at tax auctions only. And now you can really get a good feel. Uh, they're one of the few states that has kind of a, a definitely a sp pronounced spring season and then a, a big fall season as well. So you'll see uh, auctions all over the calendar. But September we have 44 scheduled, um, uh, 43 rather. Wayne's deed sale was scheduled, but it looks like it's not. There's no property for it, so it shows as complete since nothing happened. But uh, 43 tax auctions coming up and. Uh, you can see only two of them, I think, in September are missing. They just 
they just ha- have blank lists for properties for Vigo and Jefferson. So I assume they are not going to have fall sale. But uh, you can get a nice idea of when the auctions are, how many properties are in there. And let's just keep going. Uh, October is going to have an additional 43 that are scheduled. Uh, you'll notice Monroe has no parcels, but this calendar is really filled out with uh, properties just in the last few weeks here. And we may see a few more. Some of those at the end of October might not have announced yet, like Adams and Wells, Washington. So there could be more added. But right now I feel like this uh, auction season is pretty well released it's for you to look at. So with that in mind, let's just go take a look at uh, the state as a whole. So let's do Indiana, all counties. And we're going to uh, look at uh, upcoming auctions only. That's, uh, well, everything's auction in Indiana, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, they don't have over the counters. But let's check for liens only. That should filter out the foreclosures for us. All right, so here we are. Here's the state of Indiana. Right now we have 22,843 properties for you to look through. Uh, you'll notice the main concentrations. There's Evansville on the bottom of the map. There's a good chunk of properties there. Um, north of Louisville, this is always an area with uh, high density. There's two different counties there. Let's see, for reference here, this county is uh, Floyd, and the one just to the east of it would be uh, Clark County. So those two areas are Metro Louisville, just across the river here. Uh, moving north, uh, of course, Indianapolis, um, and uh, what's this area here we're talking about? Anderson. Uh, always have a lot of properties, uh, as well as Marion. I, I think Marion is the name of the county and the city, but let's double check me. Actually, it's Grant County, so there's a different county that's Marion County. So. You see my Indiana or Indiana geography, uh, but if you were checking out Marion, this is a, a good feel for what you would see um, property-wise. Uh, a lot of these, uh, when you see them on a street grid like this, they're probably uh, you know, neighborhoods and uh, residential homes for the most part. So let's back out uh, on our map again. Uh, I do want to take a second and go to the one everybody loves, Lake County. Of course, Lake County is known because it's on the edge of the Great Lakes, and it's also famous for being a suburb of Chicago here. Uh, I believe Gary, Indiana is in this area, and uh, a very high density of properties every time they have an auction, so a lot to choose from. Uh, if we wanted to filter down in Lake County and just take a uh, limited look here, uh, so we have 10,662 to choose from. Let's bump it to improvements only with a minimum of $50,000. That should still get you a rental property there. And so we just weeded out 21,000 of those properties, almost 22,000 to get down to 714, a much more manageable size for you to uh, research. Uh, just by checking, remember we checked improvements, which means there's a structure and evaluation of at least $50,000. That will take out all the small sheds or shacks or improvements that are not um, valuable enough to really probably be a home um, and th that's going to vary by market some cities uh, a rental property could be as cheap as twenty thousand dollars but uh, from my understanding fifty thousand is probably a good number to look at here so uh, but that's where your expertise will come into play we, we have the tool here for you to use and uh, bring your strategy your thresholds and and do what you want to do all right, so let's uh, go to our next state. We're going to talk about Tennessee, which has a year-round auction season, but we are seeing a few new tax deed auctions coming up. They are a 12% interest rate. It's a penalty uh, rate, which means uh, you get the 12% if they redeem at any point in that one-year redemption. Uh, here's a list of the upcoming auctions. Uh, I always want to point out uh, most of these are online, but some of them are GovEs. We also have Civic Source as a website in play, and we have in-person auctions in Tennessee. It's uh, the counties really pick and choose what they want to do. So uh, that's the auction slate. And the only over-the-counter we're tracking are the, in the are in the Shelby Land Bank, which is uh, Memphis. Uh, so uh, let's check out the auction calendar for Tennessee while we're here. And you would just go here. And so uh, we're looking at uh, four auctions in September coming up, uh, starting this week. Uh, Madison will be the first one and just on down the list. You'll see some of these, uh, like Davidson, they announced monthly auctions, but they don't release the parcels until the month of. 
So we only have Davidson for September. We don't have Davidsons for October yet. And there's uh, 21 properties in this Davidson auction. So we'll take a look at those. A, a very small auction. Uh, this is one of those cases where I would probably use the right hand uh, preview scroll and click on find on map if I want to actually find it on the map. And in this case, we see a property that uh, we can go check out the report for. Google has traveled the street, so let's take a panorama view of the neighborhood. Uh, this is the house. It's new construction, it looks like, at least uh, when this when this was captured. Uh, so a uh, nice area. I mean, Nashville, is, it's hard to beat. It's a very hot market. But uh, if this property makes it to the auction and is not redeemed first, uh, we have all the information for you here. If you want to bid on it, this is the information at the upcoming auction button. So this gives you the location of the courthouse, uh, the time, and the taxes due. So uh, that's a, uh, a good example of a, of a nice property in Davidson County that you could consider. And uh, you could just keep scrolling this list on the right and uh, look for properties that way. Or I always like to pan out and look for some of the larger acreage, but uh, in this case with such a small auction and um, kind of a city area, I don't see a lot of acreage in this one. This must be mostly houses. And uh, let's see, we'll also just review those in a grid so we can check out the total value. Uh, yeah, so we have a property nearly a million dollars there. In acreage, uh, the largest one is 7.8. Let's take a look at that property. So the, interesting enough, it's sort of in the, it looks like a um, edge of a few highways or something here. So it's, uh, let's view it on the map. Okay, so that's the largest acreage. It's not exactly residential and it does have high tension power lines running through it. So if I was researching the auction, I would not add this to my list unless I wanted an area with uh, large power lines to maybe, I don't know, park your equipment in it looks like. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how that would work. I've never tried to buy high tension power line property, but I would imagine somebody's going to have a problem with you purchasing that. Uh, just to the north here, we see another property uh, on the edge of the power lines. It's uh, maybe more appealing. Uh, 1.7, oh wow, that's um, yeah, seven acres. So yeah, the Nashville market is very hot. It's, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these properties uh, are bid pretty high or redeem in advance because they're, they're valuable properties. So that's good for Tennessee. Let's switch over to Arkansas. Uh, this, is, this is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. Their auction season is winding down. Uh, what we've seen in Arkansas is uh, their season is going through September this year. They are tax deed auctions in person and not online. Uh, we like the Commissioner of State Lands Facebook page. It's a great way to follow the auctions each week and uh, they do an excellent outreach. I, I always say this, Arkansas is my favorite state as far as uh, outreach for investors and, and helpful resources. They have videos about how to purchase, all kinds of uh, useful things there. But uh, we have 24 counties left auctioning in September. Uh, I'm sorry, there's 18 now. There, there were, uh, it must have been six last week in the first week of September. Uh, so 18 remaining in September, and seven of those counties are auctioning in this upcoming week. Uh, remember, they do have year round purchases available through the same Commissioner of State Lands. These are actually online auctions, they're miniature auctions. As soon as you bid on a property, it starts a 30 day auction. And uh, these are running every day, year round, and you're purchasing leftover tax deeds. It's a, it's a great system they put into place. Uh, and a lot of the 2023 leftover auction deeds have started showing up in that over-the-counter um, leftover sort of inventory. So uh, let's just take a last look before the season ends at Arkansas on the auction calendar. Uh, so yeah, you see um, starting in July we were having auctions and then September's our biggest month, but here we are. Um, Close to the end, we're just a couple, uh, 17 days, a couple weeks roughly out from the end of the auctions. And uh, these are the counties that will be auctioning uh, in the coming weeks. So that uh, covers Arkansas. Let's take a look next at Maryland. Uh, we say this is over the counter season for Maryland, but there's still one auction we're waiting for. Uh, the last auction that we see in 2023 is coming up on October 26th. Um, the original date was announced for early October and it looks like it's been moved back. Uh, and that is actually Baltimore County is that last auction. Uh, don't get that confused with Baltimore City. I always want to draw a distinction there. Baltimore City is a different county that is more in the uh, urban city area. And Baltimore County is just north and 
of that in the more suburban area. So, so that's the auction coming up is the Baltimore County auction. Uh, there's no list yet though, so we're uh, checking daily for that. Uh, you'll, you'll hear about it here on YouTube as soon as it's live and on our Facebook group. Uh, just to recap, there's been some changes in Baltimore City's OTCs lately. So there are now three ways to buy OTC and uh, we covered this in the last video, but I want to really uh, be repetitive here and hammer at home. So the 2023 leftovers from this year were released. They released them on a large piece of uh, or block of paper that we have to scan and put into the system. Uh, and it's about a thousand leftovers that were, were pulled in. And we're updating that as frequently as the county will mail us another paper copy. Um, this year they've started tracking the leftovers that are over a year old in a different inventory. They've got this system called Buy Into Baltimore. It's a separate website, uh, fairly new. And uh, what they've done is uh, put those 2022 tax liens over there. So you can actually buy from the tax lien program on that website, which we track in Parcel Fair 2, so you can see all these together. And then to be even more confusing, the leftovers that are more than a couple years old are also in buy into Baltimore, but in a different program that is much more similar to a land bank where you're not buying a lien, you're actually buying property. And there's about 1,500 of those. So between those three inventories, there's over 3,000 properties to look at. So uh, we don't need to cover the auction uh, calendar for Maryland because it's kind of uh, bare right now. The only thing you'll see is, of course, Baltimore County coming up the 26th with no list yet. But what we can do is uh, take a look at Baltimore City's over-the-counters uh, on the map. And you'll see, I mentioned there's three different ways to buy all merged into one map. So you can see it in one place. Uh, and so we've gone over this several times. I won't spend too much time on this. But uh, the green properties are going to be the tax liens. And we're going to have the year printed on the little info card there for you. These are, it looks like everything I'm clicking is a 2023. So um, there are 2022s in the mix somewhere. The blue properties are going to be that quiet title that you're buying from buy into Baltimore. So we have a distinction there. If you're buying a lien, it's going to be uh, colored green. Uh, yeah, so everything I'm hitting, I'm just bad at picking 2022s today. So let's, uh, let's go find a 2022 this way. I'm going to filter this way. And finally, I found a 2022 lien to show you. This is going to be from the buy Baltimore program and we're gonna link you straight to that property on their website where you can apply for it like this. So on the right hand side you would apply, add to cart, submit your inquiry, whatever, and um, that gets you that purchase uh, directly from buying to Baltimore. So uh, let's move on from Maryland. Uh, we've been talking for quite a while about the upcoming Colorado uh, uh, auction season. But until it's here, we're still in this over-the-counter foreclosure season. So uh, those fall auction lists should show up in the coming weeks. It is in September. We just don't know exactly when they're going to get here. Uh, those are tax liens on a premium bid format at 9% interest rate plus the federal discount rate. This would be a little higher this year since the federal discount interest rate is higher than normal. So I'm guessing around 14 to 15% when you add it all together. Uh, let's see. The interest rate is applied to the lien amount, not the premium overbid. So remember, you're not getting interest on your overbid. Uh, while we're waiting on that auction season, we keep adding over-the-counter properties. We're up to 10 counties that we're tracking now. Over 1,300 OTC liens, they're growing each week. And the foreclosure auctions, we're also tracking to kind of get practiced up and help everybody learn the market. Uh, we're already tracking over 100 auctions in 2023. Uh, and there were 17 tracked coming up for September so far, probably more coming. Uh, let's take a, a quick look at the auction calendar in Colorado. And uh, so the, here are the foreclosure auctions coming up. Uh, sometimes you'll see the no parcels available. That may be that they have not completed the information for that auction yet, or maybe the auction is going to get canceled, but right now there's nothing in those. Uh, but you can see these are small, sometimes one property, sometimes 24 properties. And if we throw it on the map, let's check out Colorado, all counties, and let's just clear my filters. And uh, let's do upcoming auctions. That would get us all the foreclosure auctions. So we're looking at 507 foreclosures that we know of right now that you could uh, take a look at. 
And let's switch over. I want to show you the latest county we added, Pueblo County. Uh, they have over-the-counter properties, and these are the 63 added this week for over-the-counter. And let's, let's uh, throw our county borders up so I can see what we're dealing with here. Pueblo is a, a small county in the southern part of the state. And these are the uh, tax properties I was talking about that have a lot of liens on them. So let's, let's find this one on the map, Otero Investments, 1992. And when we click on the property, the strange thing you're going to see here, uh, there it is, uh, 32 tax liens on this property. So from the county listing, we're seeing all of these tax liens. Uh, the great thing is they put the interest rate on there as well. So uh, we can see counting back from 2022 and, and these years, the interest rate in total is pretty low. And then we go back, um, they're listing a 51% interest rate on the 1992 tax lien. It's, uh, it's kind of strange to see that kind of interest rate. But I'm gonna show you where we got this. This is the county held advertisement for Pueblo County held properties. And uh, it's not the prettiest document to read, but if you look at this first property, uh, funny enough, I think that's the one I just showed you, you can see uh, yeah, all these uh, interesting um, descriptions and uh, actually there's a bunch by this property. I don't know which one it was. Uh, and if you click on one of these, it actually will take you to the uh, tax information there. So now you can see uh, what we're looking at from those over-the-counter properties. Uh, but again, it was over 900 liens on 63 properties. So it's uh, kind of a lopsided ratio there. Okay, so moving on from Colorado, next let's take a look at Mississippi, uh, which we had a lot of noise about Mississippi. The auction came and it went. Uh, all the auctions uh, happened on August 28th. 140,000 tax liens went to auction. Uh, several counties went into a second week of bidding. Uh, a lot of counties carried over into just extra days. I'll show you in a second what we're seeing now remaining. Um, but uh, if you've missed the counties that you wanted to buy at auction, you can always buy over the counter. And that's uh, uh, something we'll take a quick look at here too. But First, let's take a look at that auction calendar for Mississippi. Uh, these were all on Govies, and Govies does a great job on their email list of showing you uh, what's uh, when an auction carries on past a few days, um, what's still available. You'll see most of the counties say complete, but there are two counties that still show properties on Govies, Harrison and Jackson, uh, almost about 900 apiece. Uh, Harrison, Govies has said they will have a rebid coming up uh, I think it's this week but Jackson they've not made an announcement yet that I've seen so they're still showing properties available even though um, it, it's unclear if they're doing a rebid or if they're gonna hold that for later so again the season is definitely winding down which leaves you to the over-the-counters and we'll just show you quickly let's do all counties here and let's check for over-the-counter only in Mississippi and We'll see um, 7,400 properties. Uh, these are blue, they're tax deeds you're buying. Hines County is on the uh, left side, of western side of Jackson here. That's where most of those properties are. So Mississippi, um, again, you're uh, past the auction season for the most part with a few small options left, but really over the counters are on the way for the uh, rest of this fall into the winter. Next up, let's cover Florida. So Florida, uh, it's, there's almost something to watch year-round in Florida. Even though their tax lien auction season ended in June with uh, hundreds of thousands of properties in that, maybe even a million, it was a lot. Uh, even though that's uh, passed, we can track the over-the-counter tax lien season follows immediately afterwards. And you'll see uh, in June, 19,000 over-the-counters were added, 3,800 sold. In July, 11,500 over-the-counters were added, 7,200 sold. Uh, in August and September, you see only a few hundred were added, but you see some pretty strong numbers of what's being sold and removed from the um, availability in those inventories. Uh, but I would say we're definitely through the bulk of the over-the-counter um, surge that you would see every summer. Uh, so we turn our attention to over-the-counter deeds now, since over-the-counter liens are, are tapering. And Florida calls those lands available for taxes. We sort of scour the counties and find these lists, and they're 
very uh, scattered. They're, they're not the easiest things to find, and frankly, they're kind of small. So we're going to keep adding those. We have 15 counties that we're tracking now. Uh, we're trying to add more each week. Uh, now, if, so that's over-the-counter deeds. Remember that the tax deed auctions, they still happen weekly throughout the year. We have 57 we're tracking in September. And if that's not enough, Florida also has foreclosure auctions. We still have 312 uh, in September we're, we're watching. So let's check out the auction calendar here for Florida. It's uh, It takes a moment to load because there's just so many properties. Uh, I'm sorry, so many auctions. It's uh, um, by far and away the most auctions in any state. You'll notice uh, September 369 with these um, remaining here. Now we're showing you everything in one place. Let's filter to uh, foreclosures only, first of all. And that should take the calendar down um, quite a bit to show you, uh, let's wait for it here. Yeah, 312 foreclosure auctions coming up in September uh, in total. And then if we want to see tax deed auctions only, let's just filter by that. There's a lot fewer once that loads. So uh, let's, yeah, so out of uh, tax deed, you see 57 in September. And we're already checking for October as well. And you will see uh, we have 53 already in October. We're tracking out through the end of the year on all these auctions. So a lot going on in Florida. And if you want to see, again, there's not a ton of OTC deeds. A lot of these counties have uh, just a handful. But let's do all counties. Let's choose over the counter and let's choose uh, deeds and take a look. We're only seeing 229 total parcels. And that's just because um, when a property makes it to OTC deed in Florida, it's already gone through just the whole funnel of availability. It's already gone through tax lien auctions. It's been an over the counter lien, possibly. It also uh, cleared a tax deed auction to get this far. So you're really looking at the, the leftovers at this point, the leftovers of the leftovers, if they are um, in the OTC deeds in Florida. Okay, so moving along, let's talk about Alabama. <clears throat> Alabama, another state that has a very defined, pronounced auction season. Uh, it ended in June, but there are plenty of things to keep track of in the off season. It's still the third largest OTC inventory that we're tracking. Uh, 20,000 OTC certs and deeds and liens, and there are many ways to buy. We have a lot of videos on this. Uh, Alabama is the first state we did, so we have a lot of coverage there. But there's the Alabama State Department of Revenue. The counties themselves will hold OTC liens in some cases. We have a few land banks, and we have some resellers that buy uh, tax deeds or certificates that have they're, they're either already purchased or they'll purchase them for you. So a lot of options there in Alabama. Uh, we're not, we don't have anything new to show you this week, so I'm going to just move on to Arizona. So for Arizona, uh, we're also in the over-the-counter season, off-season. Uh, their auctions ended in March, and what we're looking at now are over-the-counter liens. They've all been released. You can purchase these directly from the county at 16% interest, and at any given time on the website, there's about 40,000 to choose. Oops, going too fast. <laughs> 40,000 to choose from. Uh, so. Again, Arizona, uh, nothing new to show you there, so I'll, uh, if you want to play around with the map and check those out, uh, feel free. Uh, winding down here of our list, we have North Carolina. Uh, their auction season appears to be year-round. These are all individual foreclosure auctions that are scheduled. Uh, we're in early preview mode still, even though we're a couple months in, uh, with just very few counties so far, and that's really because each one of these auctions and formats are different, so we have to basically uh, research each one differently to bring them to the website. But if you have county suggestions for us, please send them along. We'd love to know which ones are of interest to you, whether it's over the counter or auctions. Just uh, reach out and let us know. And wrapping up, I combined Oklahoma and Utah because they have the exact same headline. Uh, Utah auction season ended in May, Oklahoma auction season ended in June, and the over the counter properties are now available for a few counties, not many. Uh, in fact, there's none in uh, Utah yet, only Oklahoma. So if you have over-the-counter uh, inventory properties you'd like to see, uh, reach out let us know. We'll be happy to add it and take a look at that for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been fun putting this together again. I, I love getting suggestions on how to change this format and add things to this uh, that are useful to you or let me know if something's not useful and wasting your time. I <laughs> will consider taking it out of this video, but uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a great week.